Cancer treatment is divided into four main types, surgical, radiation therapy, chemotherapy, and biologic therapy. Now, the goal of cancer treatment is to eradicate the cancer. Every cancer treatment has the potential to cause harm, and treatment may be given that produces toxicity with really no benefit. In this video, we're going to talk about chemotherapy agents and their mechanism of action. Chemotherapy agents have different mechanisms of action and target different parts of the cell cycle. Combinations of these chemotherapy agents are preferred because different mechanisms of action means that they work on different parts of the cell cycle, which means that overall, less side effects. In order to understand how chemotherapy drugs, chemotherapy agents work, we firstly have to revise the cell cycle. The cell cycle has four phases. The growth one phase, or the G1 phase, where the organelles duplicate. The S phase, which is where the DNA, basically, replication occurs. The growth two phase is when the cell prepares itself for the M phase, which is mitosis, where the cell divides into two identical daughter cells. Then the cell cycle will repeat itself. We can further explore mitosis. Mitosis has other phases. The prophase is where the centrosome duplicates and form these microtubules. In metaphase, the chromosomes, the DNA really, align in the middle of the cell and the microtubules that were formed from the centrosome attach uh, to the centromeres, which are the center points of the chromosomes. In anaphase, the chromosomes are separated and uh, reach either end of the cell. In cello phase, the cell membrane constricts, ready to separate, and then a new nuclear membrane is being formed. The cell cycle is a continuous process, and so you have checkpoints during the cell cycle to make sure that there are no abnormalities in the cell before it progresses to each phase. These checkpoints include the G1 checkpoint, the G2 checkpoint, and the M phase checkpoint. One thing these checkpoints look at is whether there are abnormalities, damage or mutations to the DNA, for example. DNA is a double helix structure composed of four nucleotides. After the G1 phase, where the organelles are uh, duplicate, comes the S phase. Now in the S phase, DNA becomes replicated. Now let's revise this process. During replication, the DNA strand is separated by an enzyme called helicase. During the unwinding of DNA, tension can occur distally. The tensions are these coils that are being formed. The cells have a normal biological mechanism to fix these coils and supercoils that are being formed. This mechanism is an enzyme called topoisomerase. Here, topoisomerase 2 fixes these supercoils, reducing the tension in the DNA strand. And we'll talk about topoisomerase later on. Now, there are four types of nucleotides as mentioned in DNA. These nucleotides can be divided into two groups, pyrimidines and purines. Pyrimidines include thymine and cytosine, and purines include adenine and guanine. So what happens is a double-stranded DNA gets unwind by helicase into two separate strips. Another enzyme called DNA polymerase will create a new strand on both strips. The new strand following the helicase is the leading strand. The lagging strand is the strand that is created in segments. Chemotherapy agents target different parts of the cell cycle, as mentioned. Because of this, they are grouped into different classes. Let's take a look at the different classes, one at a time. First, let's begin with alkylating agents. The oldest anti-cancer cytotoxics. Now, these agents are anti-proliferative drugs. They work by binding covalently via alkyl groups to DNA. They then form crosslinks and thought to arrest the cell cycle in the G1 or the S phase of the cell cycle. 
Now, the alkylating agents actually bind to the nucleotide guanine. Once bound, they form cross-linkage of DNA strands. Broken or cross-linked DNA is in intrinsically unable to complete normal replication or cell division. So they undergo cell arrest. They stop. Because they are in cell arrest, the cell will then either be repaired, so it can proceed, progress through the cell cycle, or the cell will undergo apop apoptosis, basically dying. Examples of drugs in the class of alkylating agents include nitrogen mustards, such as cyclophosphamide. And there's also cisplatin. Now, cisplatin is an interesting drug. It is one of the most active anti-cancer drugs and used on many types of cancers but also come with many toxicities. It is, it is actually its, its own class, but has similar mechanism of action to alkylating agents, and so it is put in this category. The next class of chemotherapy agents are the anti-metabolites, or the anti-metabolites. These guys interfere with normal cell metabolism of nucleic acids. So really, they disrupt DNA, RNA metabolism production, interrupting the S phase of the cell cycle. We will focus on DNA metabolism here. And the four nucleotides for DNA are thymine, cytosine, adenine, and guanine, of which thymine is strictly DNA. Thymine, the DNA nucleotide, is made after a series of reactions. One important reaction is from DUMP to DTMP. This reaction is carried out by an enzyme called thymidylate synthase. For DUMP to convert to DTMP requires a co-current reaction, which thymidylate synthase also carries out. This is the conversion between methylene tetrahydrofolate to dihydrofolate. So thymidylate synthase catalyzes methylene tetrahydrofolate and DUMP to form dihydrofolate and DTMP. Dihydrofolate is converted to tetrahydrofolate by another important enzyme, dihydrofolate reductase. Tetrahydrofolate becomes methyl tetrahydrofolate once again. So this whole reaction involving these two enzymes, thymidylate synthase and dihydrofolate reductase, is important in order to make DNA. By interrupting any of these two enzymes, you are essentially disrupting thymine, thymidine synthesis, and thus DNA synthesis. A few chemotherapy agents work here. These include 5-fluorouracil, which inhibits thymidylate synthase, and also specific thymidylate synthase inhibitors. A very common drug used in rheumatoid arthritis also is a chemotherapy drug and an ectopic pregnancy drug. This drug is methotrexate, and it works by inhibiting dihydrofolate reductase. Other chemotherapy agents that work specifically on disrupting purine metabolism and synthesis include mercaptopurine and theoguanine here. In summary, anti-metabolites work by disrupting DNA, RNA metabolism and production, and thus it will disrupt cancer cells from progressing through the cell cycle. The next class are anti-tumor antibiotics. Main ones include a group called anthracyclines. These antibiotics have several mechanism of action, but their specific mechanism of action is unclear. One effect is that these anti-tumor antibiotics inhibits topoisomerase 2. Remember, topoisomerase are important enzymes in maintaining the structure, the topology of DNA. Topoisomerase 2, remember, relaxes supercoils by breaking two DNA strands, unwinding it, relaxing it, and then attaching it back together once it's unwound. And so by inhibiting topoisomerase, DNA doesn't relax, and so replication becomes hard with the supercoils, or maybe the topoisomerase breaks the DNA strand but then can't really attach it back together. Either way, DNA replication is inhibited, and the cell doesn't progress through the cell cycle. 
Another way antibiotics work is by inhibiting helicase, the enzyme which unwinds the DNA. By inhibiting this enzyme, you inhibit DNA replication. Finally, antibiotics such as anthracyclines induce reactive oxygen species formation, causing destruction of the cell and triggering apoptosis. Examples of anthracyclines include doxorubicin and donorubicin. The next class of chemotherapy drugs are the topoisomerase inhibitors. Topoisomerase, remember, are essential enzymes in regulating the topology of DNA helix. There are two types of topoisomerase. There's topoisomerase 1 and there's topoisomerase 2, which we have already talked about. Topoisomerase 1 cleaves only one strand of the DNA and relaxes DNA coil during replication. Example is here is a DNA double helix. The top isomerase one will clip one strand and then unwind it and attach it, causing one less coil. Top isomerase two, as mentioned, cleaves two strands of the DNA helix and relaxes supercoils during DNA replication, which again we've already talked about. Topoisomerase 1 inhibitors inhibit topoisomerase 1 and thus inhibits the relaxation of DNA and thus potentially inhibits proper DNA replication. Example of this chemotherapy agent is camptothecin. Topoisomerase 2 inhibitors we already talked about and include etoposide. The next chemotherapy class work on the M phase of the cell cycle and are called the antimicrotubule agents. These guys disrupt the M phase of the cell cycle, leading to cell arrest, which then will lead to apoptosis. These are the taxanes and the vinca alkaloids. Let's just quickly recap the M phase to understand how these antimicrotubule agents work. The M phase consists of the prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and chelophage. During early mitosis, microtubules are extending from the centrosomes and attached to the centromeres of the chromosome. The microtubules allow for the separation of duplicated DNA into either side of the cell before the microtubules start degrading and breaking down. Vinca alkaloids inhibit microtubule assembly or formation and so are known as microtubule destabilizers. Without no microtubules forming, this will disrupt the M phase causing cell arrest. The other group of antimicrotubules are the taxanes. These guys bind to and stabilize the microtubules that are already formed in the M phase. And so these guys are called the microtubule stabilizers. They basically inhibit the breakdown of the microtubules once they are formed. And so you don't complete the M phase of the cell cycle, which means you get M phase arrest, you get cell arrest. The other important class of chemotherapy agents are the hormonal agents, which are not discussed here because there are many types. Hopefully a separate video will look into this. Thank you for watching. I hope this helped. Thank you for watching. Finally, it's very important to understand the side effects of chemotherapy agents. I have a separate video on that, which looks at the side effects, the acute side effects of chemotherapy agents. Thank you for watching.